So, good afternoon and welcome back to the lecture series of the NCCNC machine tools. In the last class, we had discussed about the basic length unit, resolution, accuracy, and repeatability. Once again, I am telling you that this resolution, accuracy, repeatability, these three attributes together represent the precision of any system, particularly the NCCNC systems together. Okay. The, the most important is the basic length unit. If you go through the specification of any machine, say for HMT or BFW, you just go through the website, you'll find for, for the different models, you'll find resolution and BLUs are specified. Sometimes accuracies are also specified. So whenever you, someone is interested to buy a particular machine, they will have to scan or they will have to think about what should be the level of resolution, accuracy and uh, repeatability. Okay, so with these inputs, today we will go for pulse count calculation, determination of the total pulse, pulse frequency, encoder gain, and associated some numerical problems with examples. So the content wise, determination of number of pulses for definite slide movement, determination of pulse frequency for definite slide velocity determination of encoder gain and gear ratio and of course some numerical problems for the illustration purpose. Now there are two aspects if you think about the first two points determination of number of pulses and the pulse frequency. To some extent just for your better analogy or understanding as if now determination of number of pulse it is related to the displacement. Okay. And number of pulse frequency is nothing but the rate at which pulses are generated, which is tantamount to our velocity of motion, rectilinear motion. Just remember the simple relationship without motion, without acceleration or deceleration. So we, we use A is equal to Vt, that is displacement is equal to velocity into time. So this displacement of the slide always will correspond to a definite number of pulses that has to be provided by the pulse generator to the stepper motor for open loop system. In case of closed loop control system, thus it is it is relevant to the encoder for measurement of the displacement. Similarly, the rate at which pulses are generated, time rate, that is the pulse frequency and usually expressed as number per second and the most prominent unit is hertz okay why it is relevant or how these are relevant to the our metal cutting that we first ought to discuss say for instance if you think about a turning operation or a facing operation so some distance has to be covered up so the tool will start its motion from a definite point and it will continue to move unless and until the desired destination is reached. Suppose your objective is to move the tool by say 40.5 millimeter along Z axis. So this 40.5 millimeter displacement, whether tool has been moving or not, that we ought to we are supposed to measure or supposed to monitor. So how many pulses are required to drive the system or to move the tool so that this 40.5 millimeter displacement is possible? Because displacement is caused by the number of pulses. Okay, so what is the total number of pulses required to move the tool by 41.5 millimeter? Okay, it is a best generic value I have taken, uh, arbitrary value I have chosen for any displacement. It may be 78.95, it may be 101, whatever it may be. So for a definite displacement, what should be the total number of pulses? And in metal cutting, also, there is a word which we popularly known as feed or feed rate. That is the rate at which the tool is moving. So, this is nothing but the velocity. And that the rate at which it will cover that specified 40.5 or 100 millimeter, whatever it may be, it is taken care of by the pulse frequency. That is why these two parameters are of immense importance for the calculation as far as the NCCNC is concerned. Is it clear? So, that is the relevance and at the same time <coughs> there are two other parameters that is encoder gain and gear ratio we have already discussed 
but numerically we will use it or we will see what the value comes from the given um, uh, data set and which will be taken care of through the some numerical problems. It is very easy to develop this particular relationship once basic length unit is known to you. So the what is the expression of the basic length unit? P by ns into Rg. Now you just consider along any particular direction the tool is supposed to cover a displacement of or distance of n millimeter. Okay. It may be along x or it may be along y or it may be along z. <coughs> and for which we assume that NP is the total number of pulses required corresponds to that n millimeter of displacement. If that is so, then total number of pulses required okay, to cover n millimeter displacement or distance can be calculated by using this particular relationship ns into l into rg by p. How it, it has come? Just it, you, you define this, we can put it like this way l by p divided by ns into rg once again. If that is so, then p by ns into rg is what? We have already established it is BL. So l by BL. Okay. Or you can start from the scale the way we had derived the expression of the basic length unit or resolution 1 in the last class. One pulse causes some alpha degree angular displacement. What will be the corresponding displacement of the leads to alpha by Rg? 360 degree rotation causes P millimeter linear displacement of the slide. Then, then alpha, alpha by Rg is common. In this case, for NP number of pulses, L displacement is possible. We have assumed that. Then just find out what is the value of NP. So same relationship, simple linear relationship holds true for deriving this particular relationship L by BL, which eventually comes as NS into L into RG by P. So when all these are known, so for a given problem or a given program statement in a program in a program block, L the way I had given the example, say Z minus 50. That means in this case L becomes 50. Plus and minus it simply uh, identify the direction whether it will move along the negative side or along the positive side. It has nothing to do with the magnitude. Okay. So leave aside the sign. So if we consider this L value as 40.5 and for a given system NS, RG and P are fixed. So once you program the L equal to 40.5 along the axis, instantly system controller will be able to calculate what will be the corresponding number of pulses which has to be emitted. Okay. Coming to the pulse frequency, this expression is nothing new and it is derived from this total number of pulses. The way we derive the velocity from the displacement. So what is velocity? Time rate of displacement, that means displacement by time. Here also, if you want to get the pulse frequency, instead of taking the entire displacement, we have taken the feed rate into account. So FR is the feed rate that is expressed in millimeter per minute. Usually we encounter two different categories of way to define the or feed. In case of lathe, usually feed is expressed in millimeter per revolution. That is the most convenient. In case of drilling and milling, it is expressed in millimeter per minute. So millimeter per minute, it is simply your unit of the velocity, some length per unit time. Now for length, if it is given in millimeter per revolution, knowing the RPM, so if feet in millimeter per revolution is multiplied by corresponding RPM, you will get the feet rate. Millimeter per revolution multiplied by revolution per minute. So revolution, revolution cancels out. So you get millimeter per minute. So that is what exactly is the feed rate. So just you just compare these two expression. Only difference you will find A is replaced by FR. That is the rate. And 60 has come for conversion from minute to second. Because in the beginning I told 
that usually pulse frequency is expressed in millimeter is a number per second which is hertz so this 60 counts because this is expressed in millimeter per minute but while expressing the pulse frequency we have to consider number of pulses per second so that is why it is divided by 60 additionally otherwise there is no difference l is replaced by the fr ns rgp remains same and 60 additional term or additional value has introduced to convert from minute per minute to per second clear what i was talking about if you take one uh, example G01 Z minus 60 F point 2. This is one typical program block I have chosen. But afterwards, whenever you are dealing with the programming, this sort of course you will be familiar with. So just one such block of information I have to pick up. So G01, no need to remember right at this moment, but still G01 is pertaining to linear interpolation or the linear movement so following the linear interpolation the tool is supposed to move from the current any current location to a, along the z axis by minus 60 obviously in millimeter and f point 2 implies corresponding feed will be 0 0.2 millimeter per revolution now first let us when f is expressed in millimeter per revolution and n is equal to rpm then fr what we had written in the expression that is the feed rate will be f into n that is in millimeter per minute okay so that this particular fr we had considered and incorporated in the expression and since we express the frequency in hertz this is per minute so to convert it to the second it has to be divided by 60 okay so as regard to this particular expression so if you consider your focus to this one this value is correlated with the np that is the number of pulses the general expression of which you have written ns into l into rg by p perhaps so that l is nothing but this 60 okay and for pulse frequency f r that is this one so if it is usually in meaning and dealing then you obtain directly what feed rate is applied so for that particular feed rate system will be able to calculate what will be the frequency and if, if it is expressed in millimeter per revolution then multiplying the this value by 60 it can be expressed into the sorry no, not 60 but the corresponding rpm a is the rpm then it can be expressed as millimeter per minute so that is the relevance of so this portion is related to the pulse i'm writing in short frequency and this portion is related to pulse count we call it total pulse count or simply pulse count so that is the objective of discussing or analyzing this total number of pulses and the pulse frequency clear next move to the two other parameters above two expression that means what we had derived for the pulse frequency and the total pulse count they are equally applicable for open loop as well as for the closed loop only thing is that for open loop system it is input to the stepper motor okay so considering the stepper motor those expressions are developed and makes it meaningful but in case of closed loop control system since stepper motor is replaced by the servo motor and it operates on continuous analog voltage so the concept of 
discrete pulse count and the pulse frequency is no longer relevant. But it is made relevant if it, the same concept is extended in case of encoder, that is the feedback devices. So the, once again the concept of slot, number of pulses becomes relevant. So that is why it is related to the encoder. Here, one more term which is sometimes relevant, encoder gain is defined as the number of pulses emitted by the encoder per revolution. Number of pulses emitted by the encoder per revolution, which you had discussed in the last class. If you want to improve the resolution, improve means the resolution of the video should be as small as possible. So that will help us to attain very final distance to cover. So that is possible if we increase the numerator of the expression, sorry, denominator, P by NS into RG. So NS is the number of slots. So if number of slots present in the encoder, if it can be increased, then definitely resolution will increase. So encoder gain defines what? Number of pulses emitted by the encoder per revolution. That means total number of pulse, sorry, total number of slots. What is the number of slots? That much amount of or number of pulses will be emitted because pulses are generated by allowing light to pass through the transparent region or the slot and impinges on the photocell so that pulses are generated. So if you increase the number of slots from 100 to say 200, that is if you double it, your resolution will also improve accordingly. Anyway, so just to have a, so this gives an idea or indication that total number of pulses depends on the total number of slots present. More number of slots means more number of pulses will be emitted in one revolution. So this is also an indicator what would be the level of decision that you can attain by using a encoder of particular geometry and slot distribution. Clear? So sometimes it becomes relevant for numerical problems. Two other terms which we had already discussed, but you will be using very frequently during numerical problems only gear ratio. One gear ratio which you had introduced between the motor shaft and the lead screw. So our objective is that since motor rotates at much higher RPM, we ought to reduce it by incorporating a gear train having larger gear ratio. Means that means RG greater than 1, which consider RPM of the motor and RPM of the divided by RPM of the lead screw. Okay. So our objective is to reduce the rotational speed of the lead screw. But when it comes to the encoder, it is just reverse. The RPM of the rotational of the encoder disk is required to be increased as compared to the lead screw. So that more number of pulses are emitted for measuring a specific or particular distance, which will improve the resolution. That is why in the RGE, we have considered RPM of the encoder by RPM of the lead screw, which is greater than 1. That means encoder disk rotates at faster rate as compared to the lead screw. In this context, this is realistic approach. But I have mentioned greater than 1, greater than 1. But one thing, uh, sometimes I have told perhaps, but once again I am telling, that in GATE 2022, this year, okay, in production and industrial engineering, there is a question paper. Their RG was not directly told, C or 4 or 5 or 6 or something like that. It is not clearly told. But it was told that there are two gears having this number of teeth. Maybe one is 20, another is having 48 or 60, something like that. And interestingly, in that particular problem, this RG will be less than 1. Although it is not a any practical or realistic consequences, but simply for numerical calculation, it is fine. Objective of giving such type of data is that whether you are confident enough or you have understood the concept in its true spirit or not. Apparently, it may seem that the RG becomes one, less than 1, but sad told it has to be greater than 1. It is not like that perpetual. It is realistic. Actually, it happens. 
but just to judge your aptitude or your confidence level, it was just reversed. So, what happened with the value? If a particular value is divided by a smaller number or larger number, it is immaterial. But from practical respect or practical point of view, it has got definitely some consequences. So, in that case, if Rg is less than 1, what does it imply? Leads 2 will rotate at faster as compared to the motor. But usually it does not happen. Okay. So, that is the peculiarity of that particular problem. So, this sort of problem, one or two problems out of 40 or 60, I don't know how many important numerical problems are set in gate. So, one such or two such problems you can face for some unrealistic data are provided just to initially confuse the incumbents. So, don't be confused with this sort of data. Anyway, so now, so those are the theoretical background which are relevant to solve a quite a good number of numerical problems. So, I have taken, this is a gate PI 2000. This is a very simple problem. Only thing, you have to carefully study the statements. Directly open loop or closed loop, these words may not be explicitly stated in the problem. But by going through the statement, what are the components involved? You have to understand whether it is open loop category or closed loop category. Another important point regarding gear ratio, it may so happen that sometimes in a particular problem it is told, I will come to later on, that motor and lead screw is directly coupled. When motor and lead screw is directly coupled, that means Rg equal to directly coupled means motor and lead screw will rotate at the same RPM. If both rotate at the same RPM, then what is the uh, significance of Rg? What would be the value? One, exactly. So either this motor set and this lead screw may be connected directly so that both will rotate at the same speed or if there is some space constraint, in that case, they, it can be shifted, but if you want to maintain the same speed, just put two identical gears. So, two identical gears means same pitch, same um, uh, you know, number of teeth, diagonal diameter. So, these are basically false. Only for space constant, you have to make this additional arrangements for the gear. So, this is another word you must focus in the problem statement. Okay, directly coupled. That means there is no such gear or even if it is present, Rg is assumed to be 1. Okay, so that is why the, the solution of these problems are important. A stepper motor, so stepper motor, that means whether it is open loop or closed loop. Okay. Open loop, first. So, you will be able to distinguish this is a stepper motor means open loop problem. It has got 150 steps, that means N is equal to 150. So, you can write it down in the data, N is equal to 150 and on the top, it is open loop problem. The output shaft of the motor, you see, the output shaft of the motor is directly coupled to a lead screw of pitch 4 millimeter. So, when directly coupled word is incorporated in the problem statement, that implies Rg equal to 1. Now, if the frequency of pulse supply to the motor is 200 Hz, what is the speed of the table? That is the problem. Very simple. Here the frequency of pulse supply to the motor is told 200 Hz. So, the pulse frequency Fp is 200 Hz. So, that means 200 pulses per second. So, if you want to convert it for to in the minute, so it has to be multiplied by 60. So, it gives 1000 pulses per minute. Just we convert it from uh, pulses per second to the pulses per minute. Since the stepper motor has 150 steps, so, 150 pulse will cause one complete devolution of the motor. If the stepper motor has 150 number of steps, so in one complete devolution, okay, 150 pulse will cause one complete devolution. And since motor and lead screw is directly coupled, so lead screw will also rotate the same distance, okay, or the same number of rotation. And one complete rotation of the lead screw causes p millimeter linear displacement of the table. So, eventually we are in a position to correlate motor to lead screw, lead screw to slide. 
So 150 pulse is causes one complete revolution of the motor, which in turn displaces the table by 4 mm because lead screw is also directly connected to the motor. So motor rotates. 150 number of pulses will cause motor to rotate by one complete revolution. Clear? Now lead screw is directly coupled to the lead screw. So lead screw will also rotate by the same amount. And one complete revolution of the lead screw will cause 3 mm, that is in this particular case 4 mm travel. So what will be the resolution if it is told to calculate? Uh, 150, 4 by 150, so that will be your resolution. So anyway, in this case it is not asked, therefore 12,000 pulses will move the table by 12,000 into 4 by 150, that is equal to 320 millimeter. Now this 12,000 number is on what is calculated in or expressed in minute. Okay, so definitely your table rate 320 millimeter will be expressed per minute. Because in the your gate problem, you have to because this in the problem statement itself, this millimeter per minute is given in all sorts of uh, your uh, gate problem. The in, in in which unit you have to answer that is given normally at the end of the problem statement is in the bracket. Maybe kilojoule, maybe in kilowatt, maybe in hour, maybe in minutes, maybe in seconds. Only numerical value you got to calculate. Okay, so so be careful about the unit of the gate problem. Okay, so in this case, it is usually expressed or calculated in terms of millimeter per minute. So what is the complexity of the problem? Just it will take. If your understanding is clear, it will take not more than one minute. Only thing you have to clearly visualize the open loop and closed loop system, how the system is working. Move to the second problem. This is gate production and industrial engineering 2010 problem. For a three axis CNC table, the slide along the vertical axis of the table is driven by a DC servo motor via a lead screw nut mechanism. So salient data, this three axis system it is not yes, important. Uh, the lead screw has a pitch of 5 mm. So pitch is given. The lead screw is fitted with a relative incremental circular encoder. So it is a closed loop problem. Here, yeah. one thing is the lead screw is fitted with a relative circular encoder. The basic length unit, that is the value or resolution of the slide along that particular vertical axis for which we are interested is that is 0 0.005 millimeter. That is the value or resolution. That is told. Clear? Yeah. What is the number of pulses generated by the encoder when the table moves along the vertical axis, that is the same vertical axis by 9 millimeter. So relevant data are given. Uh, leads to pitch, basic length unit 0 0.005. You have to calculate the total number of pulses for 9 millimeter displacement along the vertical axis. And one thing that is also obvious that gear ratio, if any, this is also has to will be one because nothing is categorically told about the presence of gearing system. So, lead screw and the encoder, that also may be coupled directly. So, RGE is also one. Okay. So, something is implicit that you have to understand from the problem statement. We will go to the solution. So, first, BLU or resolution will be B by LS into RGE. P is 5 millimeter. BLU is told 0 0.005 mm. So in this case, NSE, that is the number of slot presents in the encoder, that is, you have to calculate it first. So it is easily calculated, it comes as a 1000. So that means 5 millimeter slide displacement is equivalent to one complete revolution of the encoder disk. Here encoder disk is placed to measure the, to monitor the slide displacement. So we get 1000 number of um, uh, thousand is the number of slot presents. So number of slots means that number or equivalent number of pulses will be emitted. So thousand pulses are responsible for representing or monitoring 5 millimeter. So resolution is you can calculate. Anyway, for this problem resolution is given that is the BLU 
you can calculate what is the number of slots. So therefore, 9 millimeter side displacement equal to, if you have to how much? 9 by 5, that is 1.8 revolution of the encoded disk. So for 5 millimeter linear displacement, if encoded disk undergoes one complete revolution, then in the problem it is told that what should be the total number of pulse count for 9 millimeter displacement. So for 9 millimeter, how, uh, what should be the fractional movement? 1.8 full rotation. Encoder has 1000 slots, so one complete revolution will cause emission of 1000 pulses. Can you say from the earlier discussion what would be the this interpretation of 1000 pulses in one rotation? We had discussed one typical term initially, theory. Pulse count, pulse frequency, gear ratio. One more term we had discussed, encoder gain. That is total number of pulses emitted by the encoder in one full rotation. So that depends on the number of slots. So the, anyway, so if it is told to calculate what will be the number of uh, and what is the encoder gain, then that would be 1000. So in, any way, in this case, 1.8 evolution of the encoder disk will cause 1.8 into 1000, that is 1800 pulses per to be emitted. One rotation causes 1000 pulses, so 1.8 rotation multiply 1.8 into 1000. So simple basic arithmetic, nothing else. Only your conception has to be clear. Another problem, a DC servo motor, that means it is open or closed loop system. DC servo motor, uh, closed. closed loop. So possibility of explicit problem statement regarding open or closed loop is usually not present. So to the combination of the different components, you have to understand whether it is open or closed loop. Ha, ha. Earlier days, majority of the servo motor was of DC type, but in the recent times, majority of the DC servo motors are replaced by the AC servo motors for better performance and very minimum maintenance required. Performance of AC servo motors is far better as compared to DC. So, DC servo motors coupled to a leads to which drives the table of AC machine tool. A digital encoder is fitted at the end of the disk. Digital encoder is nothing different from the incremental encoder because it also relies on the binary. So pulse, no pulse. That means it is digital. It means 600 pulses per revolution. That it, if the motor rotates at 900 rapid, determine the, the following attributes: table speed, BLU, frequency, all these things. The, the table speed you can calculate easily. RPM of the motor into the pitch, so that will be equal to 2.7 meter per minute. Once again, there is no question of gearing. Rg equal to 1. Okay, so more rotation of the motor will be equal to more rotation of the leads to and one rotation causes p millimeter linear displacement. So directly you can obtain what is the table velocity, Vt. Vt is the velocity of table, not velocity of travel. Since the encoder emits 600 pulses per revolution, that is the encoder gain. The number of slots in encoder disk would also be 600. So BLU equal to P by NS into E because RGE equal to 1, that is neglected. So 3 by 600, so 0 0.005 millimeter is the BLU. As regard to the pulse frequency, 600 into 900 by 60. Only it is converted to the hertz. This much 9000 pulses per second. So, this problem is solved. This is another. See, this is a, a rather little bit different. In the sense, in this particular problem, it, you are told to calculate gear ratios. That means there is a gearing system in between the leads 2 and the motor. Design a closed loop control system using a DC motor as the axial drive element and an incremental encoder as the feedback device. The maximum speed of the motor is 1800 rpm. Okay. 
the system is equipped with a lead screw of 10 mm pitch. The maximum required feed rate is 6 meter per minute and the required resolution is 0 0.01 mm. You have to find it out, these three parameters. Now one thing is you should note that the maximum speed of the motor and here it is told maximum required feed rate. So maximum feed rate will be possible to attain when the motor rotates at its maximum RPM. Because the table movement is possible initially through the rotational motion of the motor. So the highest possible feed rate that can be achieved that must correspond to the maximum speed of the motor or the rotational speed of the motor. Okay. So no need to be confused that what would be the maximum, maximum. Here it is stated maximum. Here it is told maximum. So maximum speed that is the RPM which is 1800 RPM related to the maximum or the highest speed rate of 6 meter per minute. So one by one you just calculate. The required resolution is 0 0.01 millimeter it is told. Since the encoder is directly mounted on the leads to RGE equal to 1. Now one hand I am returning back to the problem statement once again. There are two possibility of introducing gear system. One is first leads to sorry motor shaft leads to. So the in between there will be a gearing section which we talk about RG or symbolize the RG. Then between leads to and the encoder shaft which we identify as RGE. So in this case you are told to calculate the RG that is the required gear ratio between the motor and the leads to. But regarding gearing system between the leads to and the encoders have it is 1. Or in other words you can say the encoder disc is directly mounted at the end of the leads to. Clear? So that is keeping that in mind RGE equal to 1. So for, since it is a closed loop control system, so re resolution is P by NSE into RGE. Pitch is given 10 millimeter. Resolution is told 0 0.01 millimeter. So number of slot present in the encoder is 1000. So that is the encoder again. Number of slots means? That is the encoder again. So since the number of slots in the encoder disk is 1000, it will emit equal number of pulses in one revolution which is the encoder again. First part is over. Then comes the pitch of the lead screw is 10 millimeter. That is one revolution will cause 10 millimeter linear displacement of the table. The rotational speed of the lead screw is at the maximum level. It has told that table maximum travel speed is 6 meter per minute. So 6 meter means 6 multiplied by 1000. Mind that. That is why 6000 comes. Millimeter by pitch because we want to get rotational RPM. Okay, so this is the rotational speed of the lead screw. And the motor speed is told in the problem 1800. So how to get the RG? Motor speed is 1800, lead screw speed is 600, that is the RPM. Then what will be the gear ratio? Uh, and simply gear ratio. Rotation of the gear is nothing but the rotational speed of the motor by rotational speed of the lead screw. So 1800 by 600, see? So the gear ratio is 1800 by 600. The maximum frequency of pulses emitted by the encoder. So if that is the maximum table speed, okay. So we have to identify or we have to calculate what should be the total pulse emitted or the pulse frequency of the encoder. Since motor, sorry, your encoder has got 1000 slots and it has got undergo 600 RPM. Okay. So one rotation will cause 1000 pulse. 600 rotation will cause 600 into 1000. But it is expressed in minute per minute uh, because RPM. So it has to be divided by 60 to express it in pulse per second or in hertz. So that is 10,000. 
very simple perhaps the last problem get pi to 2009 determine the total angular moment in degrees of a lead screw with a pitch of 5 mm to drive the work table by a distance of 200 mm in NC machine simply angular displacement in degree you have to calculate on the, the very fundamental understanding lead screw with a pitch of 5 mm to drive the work table by a distance of 200 mm millimeter. So if the work table is, is moved by 200 millimeter having a pitch of 5 millimeter then what will be the total number of rotation? 200 by 5? So 200 by 5 will give you the complete number of revolution that leads to. It is told that determine the total angular movement of the leads to. Motor portion is not asked for. So simply the angular displacement of the lead screw. So one rotation causes 360 degrees. So this much of rotation will cause 40 into 360. That is 14,400 degrees. So, so five different problems, mostly from gate or similar to the gate problems I have picked up. Uh, hopefully, it will be helpful for your better understanding of the open loop, closed loop onto system and the associated parameters like pulse frequency, resolution, pulse count, gear ratio, encoder gain, all these. So these are very prominent and very fundamental to the understanding of the CNC system in terms of as far as in, we call it genetically engineering analysis of the NC CNC systems. Clear? So in the next class another topic related to the uh, interpolation that is a little bit advanced that we will discuss and accordingly few more problems combining the initial precision, pulse count, pulse frequency and using the concept of interpolation that will be discussed. Okay. So thank you for your patience hearing. If you have any question you can ask or afterwards you can interact or communicate to me. Thank you once again.